welcome to 69 Church Street. This is one of the largest pre-revolutionary houses in America. It has seven bedrooms, eight and a half bathrooms, and about 8,500 square feet of interior living space, all on a grand estate lot. 69 Church Street is an iconic property in the heart of the South of Broad District of Charleston. It steps away from Rainbow Row, a nice salmon colored house that would fit right in on Rainbow Row with the other array of colors. It's currently on the market for $9.5 million. We can't wait to show you more. Sixty Nine Church was built in 1745, and it's a traditional Georgian double house, which means it has four principal rooms on each floor with a center hall and a staircase elegantly rising four floors. The ceilings are about 11 feet on each floor, which is unusual. Even on the third floor, they're 11 feet. There are amazing nine over nine double hung windows. The interior 69 Church has some of the finest examples of both Georgian and federal style architecture and period details. This is the formal sitting room at the front of the house. It would have been used to receive guests back in the day. The woodworking in this house is incredible and all original. The mantles of the 16 fireplaces are also equally special. This mantle in particular has very rare twin Corinthian columns on each side and an Adamesque fresco on the top. Delft tiles, and King of Prussia marble, which you can't even get anymore. The current owners have chosen to furnish the home in a historic style. This sofa, for instance, is from the 1700s, and there are other period pieces scattered throughout the home. This is the formal dining room of 69 Church. I'm sure it hosted amazing dinner parties in its day with the Madeira flowing, and just back when Charleston was one of the wealthiest ports in the country. This room has one of the 16 fireplaces in the house, again with the Delft tiles, which are really cool. They're the blue and white, and each has individual scenes painted on them. This is the rare King of Prussia marble surround. And also this still has a candelier. It has been electrified a little bit, but still at night with the candlelight, it's pretty magical to eat here. Charleston's historic district is governed by a board of architectural review, which has purview over the exterior of all the buildings, as well as certain houses, it does have some restrictions on some interior changes as well. Most homeowners are really amazing stewards of these historic properties and strive to keep the integrity of the historic features inside, even when they do a modern renovation on a kitchen or bath. They like to keep the same woodwork and the architectural details because they're really amazing. One thing that's cool in 69 Church is that all of the windows have these really amazing interior shutters that are original back from 1745. They are solid wood and they fold back flush in the window and they still have the original iron locking mechanism. So that was done not only for privacy, but also for hurricane protection. This is the library or the den in the house. I think it's the coziest room in the house. It's all Cypress paneled, original from 1745, which is amazing. The woodwork is exquisite. It has really fine detail. It's kind of little sashes or fans on the chair rail, which is really impressive and also really rare. I haven't seen it in many homes in Charleston. Again, another fireplace, this one with Delft tiles with the ship theme. All of the floors are the original heart pine floors from the mid 1700s. And also this room, like the others, all have the interior working shutters. These are done in Cyprus that matches the rest of this room. The current owners embarked on a three year restoration of this house back in the late 90s. They took this wood, the Cypress, back down to its original finish. They really were concerned about bringing the house back to its original and former glory. It's really a masterpiece. This is the ballroom of 69 Church, which is quite amazing. There aren't that many houses left here in Charleston that have ballrooms, but there, there are probably about a dozen. It is spectacular. The light in this room is amazing. This is on the second floor. I think for modern living, for a modern family, it'd be a great family room. You could have some comfy sofas and just really make it a fabulous gathering space for the family. Back in the day, of course, they would have hosted big parties, held meetings, had formal receptions, all of that up here. And if these walls could talk, boy, would they have some tales to tell. The history of this house is incredible, as were some of the notable residents. Jacob Mott was one of the first owners of the house, and he was the treasurer of the colony of South Carolina. And meetings for the House of Commons Assembly, which was the kind of the legislature of the colony of South Carolina, were held in this room. It's only had three owners in the last 150 years, which is really quite remarkable for a property of this size. So now we're in one of the guest bedrooms. There are five bedrooms in the main house, 
and two bedrooms in the kitchen slash carriage house out back. The bed in this room is a Charleston rice bed, which you can tell by the detail here, these are the grains of rice. Rice was a very, very important crop in the late 1700s and early 1800s here in Charleston. Each guest room has a detailed woodwork and each guest room has its own private ensuite bath, which is really rare in Charleston downtown houses. Obviously when the house was constructed in 1745, there was no indoor plumbing. So at some point over the last two and a half centuries, whenever indoor plumbing was added, they did it in a really smart way. They added two towers off the back of the house. That's where they put all the bathrooms. So it's unusual that each bedroom then has an ensuite bath, but it didn't mess up the structural integrity of the house. We're in the primary bedroom now, which is on the third floor. This one has amazing views of the Charleston rooftops, which is great. This location on Church is one of the best in town. The Cooper River and the Ashley River in Charleston Harbor are literally steps away. This primary bedroom also features a rice bed. It's the same size as the ballroom beneath, so it's quite grand in scale. Still has 11 foot ceilings here on the third floor, which is unusual because usually the ceilings get lower. And the fireplace mantle in this is incredibly special. It has an Adamask pastoral scene, again, dual Corinthian columns on each side. And it's really one of the best architecturally and significant mantles I've seen in a long time. So this is the primary bathroom. It's got dual vanities with marble countertops, a working fireplace, a double access walk-in shower, the natural light is incredible with the nine over nine windows and you kind of feel like you're in a tree house with views of the treetops and the beautiful rooftops of Charleston. The primary bathroom is also really elegant because it has two crystal chandeliers, which is really nice and really cozy in the winter to kick on the gas fireplace up here. Also on this floor are two other guest rooms. The current owners have turned one of them into a giant walk-in closet, which is kitted out quite nicely. And again, each of these rooms has an ensuite bath. The staircase in this house is incredible and the lovely arched windows give beautiful glimpses of the garden beyond. In Charleston, this area is known as a hyphen and that's actually the room that leads between the main house and the kitchen house. These owners are currently using it as a full-on wet bar. Historically, the kitchen house wouldn't have been attached to the main house to prevent the main house from catching fire if there was a fire in the kitchen house. We're now entering the historic themed kitchen. This was the original kitchen to the house with these large openings, which is where people would have cooked boiled water. And the current owners have decided to make it feel like it was utilitarian as it would have been back in the 1700s. So what they've done is made a combination of high-end appliances with reclaimed wood counter surfaces. One of the noted architectural details of this kitchen house are these lancet arched windows. They're unique to this property and they carry out throughout the structure and are reflected also in the privets in the garden. We're now entering what they're using as a two bedroom guest house. And they've retained again, a lot of the historic architectural features, including another oversized fireplace where they would have also cooked. So the current owners had originally moved the kitchen into here when they were renovating the property. And then they realized how well this functioned as a guest house. And so their two teenage boys spent their teenage years in this two bedroom, two bath guest house. We're now outside in the exquisite gardens, which are broken into what we call in Charleston garden rooms. First, take a great look at the carriage house from this angle. It's a two-story stucco over brick structure that's the same age as the house. And again, you get to see the facade of the lancet arched windows. 69 Church Street stands on an almost one third of an acre lot, which is very large for downtown Charleston. Because of our favorable weather, we entertain a lot outside making this yard feel intimate in various rooms really allows you to entertain in different ways. So one of the sweet little treasures of the five rooms is the secret garden. It's hidden by large hedges and has sweet little seating and a cherub fountain. Perfect place to have a drink or a spot of tea. 
We are now in the largest of the five garden rooms. And as you can see, there's a very large round pool here. It's been one of the oldest pools in Charleston and being round is also very unique. There are many, many people my age who've said they took swimming lessons in this pool when they were younger. In the back are one of the most well-maintained examples of historical privets in the city. Privets would have been the outhouses when there was no plumbing in the house for people to use the facilities. The privets are currently being used, one, as pool storage for things like cushions for the outdoor seating areas, and the other one is still being used as a bathroom, but with actual plumbing inside. And they are um, very unique to this property as well. We are now at the furthest end of the property in the furthest garden where there is many different kinds of citrus and fruit trees. There are pomegranate plants out here. We have some loquats. We have some lemon and lime trees. This is also where there used to be a carriage house. That concludes our tour of 69 Church Street. This is one of the jewels of Charleston. The 1745 house has seven bedrooms, eight and a half bathrooms, 8,500 square feet, the super chic pool, and the extensive gardens. And it's all on the market for $9.5 million.